Hello anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsip, and in this video we will explore the spaces, both real and potential, created by the cranial meninges. And some of the clinical considerations, specifically the hematomas or hemorrhages, the, uh, those words are used interchangeably often, that will occur in these areas. So hopefully by the end of this, you can draw your own diagram of the meningeal spaces associated with the skull and where an epidural, a subdural, and a subarachnoid hemorrhage or hematoma will occur. Of note here, we are obviously going to focus more on the anatomical basis of these. So where it's located between which meningeal layers and less about how these present clinically or what to do about it if they do occur. This will certainly be covered in other lectures uh, during the neuro portion. So a reminder on what is the difference between a real and potential space. A real or actual space is going to be naturally occurring. So sometimes it's visible, um, but it certainly will be naturally occurring. Uh, whereas a potential space is typically not naturally occurring. So a potential space be can become a real or actual space with the entrance of say blood or other fluids, air, that will separate normally adherent structures or normally adherent meningi layers. So let's discuss some of these spaces and the clinical considerations in these areas, starting with the most superficial, which is the epidural space. The uh, epidural space is gonna be located between the bone, as you can see here, and the periosteal dura. So here's the periosteal dura, here is the bone, and here is the epidural space. And this is a potential space. Hopefully you, you recall that in the spinal region, the epidural space is actually an actual real space that's often filled with epidural fat. But in the cranial region, this epidural space can become a real space in cases of an epidural, sometimes referred to as extradural, hematoma or hemorrhage. So you can see here that blood is located between the bone and the periosteal dura. And this blood is typically arterial in origin and most commonly a branch of the middle meningeal artery will tear, which um, as its name suggests, will be supplying blood to the meninges. So if you ever hear the term epidural hematoma, it's located in this region. Obviously you can see how um, this can lead to compression of the brain and a whole slew of presentations can occur to be discussed in upcoming clinical lectures. Okay, next we have the subdural space, which is going to be located between the dura, specifically the meningeal dura, and the arachnoid mater. So you can see that located here in this kind of yellow color. This is another potential space that can become an actual space where escaped blood, which is typically venous in origin, uh, will separate these layers that are typically adhered. So this right here is going to be the subdural hematoma. Here is your meningeal dura. Here is your arachnoid. And then you have typically venous blood that will enter into this region. So this is what occurs in a subdural or sometimes referred to as a dural border hemorrhage or hematoma. And lastly, we have the trusty subarachnoid space, which I hope at this point we understand is an actual or real space that in a healthy individual has lots of structures running through it typically. So you have cerebrospinal fluid as well as neurovasculature. However, there can also be hemorrhages occurring in this space um, as well due to many or multiple causes such as head trauma, but most commonly a subarachnoid a hematoma occurs because of a ruptured, uh, sometimes referred to as a ruptured saccular aneurysm. You will discuss very aneurysm soon. But the blood will escape and be held within the subarachnoid space, which is between the arachnoid and the pia mater. And so it will be held in that space there. And this is referred to as a subarachnoid hematoma or hemorrhage. 
Excellent, we have reached the summary slide and hopefully you feel comfortable with the anatomical spaces, both actual or potential associated with meninges and where these hematomas or hemorrhages can occur, these more common ones. Please take time to review and reach out if you have any questions. Please have an excellent rest of your day.